Tree of Surrender. Cuban Freedom Fight Poems is a 2008 historical novel for young people written by Marguerite Engel. The plot is based on Rosario Castellanos Castellanos, a famous figure in Cuban history. Rosa is a freed slave who becomes a nurse on the run, helping the Mambi rebels fight for independence from Spanish rule in mid-19th century Cuba. The Surrender Tree is based on Engel's own Cuban-American background and stories she learned from her grandparents who survived internment. In a Cuban reconcentration camp, the Tree of Surrender is written in free verse, poetry that doesn't rhyme and doesn't have the right meter. The poems switch mainly between four points of view, Rosa, her husband Jose, a cruel slave hunter named Lieutenant Death, and a young girl named Sylvia. In short, evocative lines of poetry, Engel explores the themes of justice, freedom, the consequences of war, and the importance of compassion. The novel is divided into five parts, spanning the years 1850 to 1899 and following Rose from childhood to adulthood. In the first section, titled The Names of the Flowers, Rose is a little girl who grew up as a slave among the coffee groves and sugarcane plantations in Cuba. She is called the Witch Child as she spends time with healing women, learning the names of plants and flowers and their healing properties. Rose helps women heal runaway slaves, or Cimarrons, who have been repulsed. She often meets the slave hunter's son, a boy with dangerous eyes, whom she refers to as Teniant Muerte, or Lieutenant Death. Lieutenant Death was raised by his father to think of slaves as subhuman. His father tells him to just call Rose a little witch and not witch girl or else she'll think she's human. Lieutenant Death watches as his father collects the ears of slaves who resist capture and trades them for pesos. Lieutenant Death is afraid and dislikes Rosa. Rose is unhappy when her owner lends her to a slave hunter. She must travel with him and Lieutenant Death, raiding hidden Cimarron villages. Rosa heals the wounded slaves, but is powerless to free them. She muses that a hate must be hard to learn. The second part of the Ten Years' War begins in 1868. Rural planters rebel against Spanish rule, burning their fields and cities. They also free their slaves. Former slave owners now fight alongside former slaves against the Spanish army. Rosa suddenly finds herself a free woman. She wonders, is it really true that freedom only exists when it is a treasure shared by all? Rosa is also at a psychological crossroads. She decides to do her part and fight with flowers and leaves instead of weapons, healing people in her own war against death. Now on the loose, Rosa meets Jose Francisco Verona, who is also a freed slave and a nurse. They fall in love and marry, devoting themselves to healing the wounds of slavery and the wounds of war. They join the Mumbai rebels, treating injuries and illnesses. Rosa's healing abilities, along with her compassion, are now legendary and have made her a target for the Spanish forces. Rosa and Jose must hide in the forest and work in secret. The Spanish Empire does not respect the freedom of slaves who received it from a rebellious owner, and slave hunters are still active. Lieutenant Death leads a personal vendetta against Rosa and hunts her relentlessly. He is injured while chasing her, and Rosa heals him. Captain General Valeriano Valer y Nicolau, a Spanish officer, also wants to kill Rosa, the witch, to keep her ear in a jar to symbolize that slave owners cannot free their slaves without Spanish approval, and to show that the rebel cause is doomed. Weiler orders all Cuban peasants to leave their farms and go to the concentration camps or else they will be killed. Conditions in the camps are difficult, there is not enough food, people begin to starve and die of disease. Many try to escape into the jungle. Jose and Rosa work tirelessly, but they are exhausted and Jose worries, who will cure us? The period 1878 to 1880 brings the little war. Rosa muses, little war? How can it be a small war, some deaths, less than others, the departure of mothers, who cry, a little less? The War of Independence takes place from 1895 to 1898. At this time, the United States shows interest in Cuba and intervenes in the conflict when the Spanish army blew up the American ship Maine in Cuban harbor. We also meet Sylvia, an 11-year-old girl whose family was sent to the concentration camps. Sylvia is now an orphan, having lost all her family members to starvation and disease. Sylvia knows about Rosa, who once healed her grandmother. Sylvia believes that Rosa is her only hope and escapes from the reconcentration camp to learn the methods of treatment from her. 
Rosa and Jose take in Sylvia and Rosa teaches her how to be a nurse. Tree of Surrender is the final section of the book and refers to a real tree in Santiago, Cuba, where the Spanish forces finally surrender to the United States. While Rosa, Jose, and Sylvia are glad the Spaniards are gone, they are disappointed that Cuba is still not independent, now under the rule of the United States. Jose comments, we can only watch from afar as the Spanish flag goes down and the American flag slides up. Our Cuban flag is still banned. However, they are full of hope. Sylvia says, the world is not heaven, as I imagined, but it is a chance to dream. The Surrender Tree has received numerous awards, including the Newberry Honor Award and the Pura Belpre Award, given to a Hispanic or Latino author whose work best portrays and celebrates Latin American culture in a work of literature, for children and young adults. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.